Hi, stationary friends. Welcome to Ginger Peachy Stationery. My name is Sarah, and today I want to talk through my top five fountain pens for beginners who think that they're going to love fountain pens. So, um, a lot of people's beginner fountain pens list will have things that are sort of disposable or like super inexpensive pens that are, you know, things that you would hand to somebody who's like, hey, what are you doing? You'd be like, here, just take this. Um, I want to talk about pens for people who are um, pretty sure that you're going to like this. I know that I was kind of like that when I got, when I first tried someone's fountain pen, I was like, okay, yes, I'm going to be into this. <laughs> and so I didn't want to waste my time with, you know, junk pens for lack of a better word. Um, I wanted to jump in with both feet. So um, here is my list of my top five. Um, number one, this is a very non-traditional um, pick for first fountain pen. Um, a lot of people would say this is maybe your second or third pen, but I think that if you are interested in this hobby, the Twisby Eco is a great place to start. So the Eco is a, a medium size to, to large size pen. Um, the cap unscrews from the body to take it off. It's a clear demonstrator. Um, all of them, they might have different colored caps um, or piston knobs, but they are clear demonstrator. You can see your ink in there. You can see the ink in the feed. Um, you can kind of see what's happening in your pen. And um, this uses a what we call a piston mechanism for filling, which just means that you have this piston that is in the pen that moves up and down when you twist the piston knob. And when you put this down in your ink bottle or your ink sample, um, make sure that the ink is covering the, the filler hole, which is right here on the back of your nib. And then twist, 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 twist. It draws ink up into it just like, you know, a syringe um, at the doctor's office does. So um, that's a piston filler. And so then you're ready to write. You already have ink down at your nib. You just wipe this with a little paper towel to get the extra ink off and you are ready to go. Um, the Ecos come in lots of nib sizes. They use Jovo German nibs. Um, so they are um, nice and smooth, juicy nibs. They come in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and stub, possibly two stub sizes, but I cannot remember. And, um, these, this pen will run you about $32. So it's, it's not a cheap investment, um, especially if you're a beginner, but if it's something you really think you will enjoy, it is not a bad investment. Um, so sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so some of the pros of this, I've kind of already mentioned, are that it's a demonstrator. You can see what's happening in there. You can see how much ink you have. When you use a shimmer ink, which I have in this one, you can see that shimmer in there to kind of make sure it's incorporated into the liquid when you get ready to write. Um, yeah, it's just a really great pen all around. The only con is that you can't carry an extra cartridge with you when you go um, because if you run out of ink, you have to have a bottle or a... A sample to refill your pen but it does have a large ink capacity so you know as long as you're leaving the house with a good amount of ink in there you're not gonna run out so I think this is a really great option um, and yeah that is my first pick um, there is also a pen called the Eco T it is basically the same pen it has just a triangle shape on the top instead of a hexagon and then the grip is a little more molded to um, kind of make you hold it the quote unquote proper way. But that is really the only difference, the only two differences between the two pens. You can see that there's a hexagon and a triangle on the top and on the bottom. So um, if you hear Eco T, it's basically the same pen and they're the same price. Um, okay, so my second pick is the Pilot Kakuno. So this is the only Kakuno that I own, um, but they have a series that are in transparent colors that are super, super cute. Um, the Kakuno is a snap cap, so it just pops right off. It's also actually a hexagon shape. I didn't think about that till just now, but 
Um, it again has a clear grip, so you can kind of see your ink in there and what's going on. Um, this uses a cartridge converter filling system. So you have a couple of options. Your pen will come with a cartridge. It'll come with a full cartridge that um, you put in here and you just pop it in. It takes a little bit of force to pop it in there. And when you break that seal, which you can see the little plug that was in this one, um, then your ink will start to flow down towards your nib. And you give it a few seconds, kind of, you know, turn it this way and let that ink get down there and you are ready to write. Um, alternately, you can pick up a converter. This is called a, a converter, which converts your pen from a cartridge filler to um, a piston filler because you just push this in just the same way and this makes your pen a piston filler, kind of like the Twisby. Again, you just put this down in your ink bottle, draw up your ink, and you have a lot more color options, ink color options with a bottle or a sample than you do with cartridges. Um, you can take a blunt syringe like this one and refill your ink cartridge, which a lot of people do. And it actually, for most pens, gives you more ink capacity. You can fit a lot more ink in there than you can in this, in this, in this converter. Um, so a lot of people like to just refill their cartridges. You can do that a few times before they kind of wear out. Um, so the Kakuno runs you about $12, 12 dollars 12 dollars dollars um, the nibs on, um, like I said, this is a Japanese pen, um, and the nibs on Japanese pens tend to be finer. So if you buy a Japanese, um, medium nib, it's going to be more similar to a German fine nib. If you buy a Japanese fine, it's going to be more similar to a German extra fine. So they run about a size smaller. It's not an exact science, but if you tend to write smaller, you tend to like finer lines, um, then you probably will like German nibs. I mean, Japanese nibs. And at these prices, really, you can kind of try some of, of all of them and um, not break the bank too much. So this is about a $12.50 pen, um, and the converter is about $6.00. So you're in for about $18, $19 plus um, any extra ink that you buy. But I think it does come with a cartridge. Um, super cute pen. Um, yeah, not a lot uh, of negative things to say about it. Um, my third pick is the um, Kaveco Sport. So Kaveco is a German brand. Um, it does not come with a clip on it. Actually, I can take that off. It comes just like this. Um, it's a screw on cap. It's almost too short for most people to comfortably use it without the cap on the back, but it is made to be posted for you to put that cap on there and it becomes a full size, very comfortable pen to use. Um, and then you can purchase this clip separately to go right on there, which I always do. I just always kind of like the weight of the clip and and the look of it. So um, anyway, so a Caveco Sport is again a cartridge converter filling system. It will come with a short standard international cartridge. Um, the standard international cartridges and converters can be used in a wide range of pens. Um, and Caveco in particular does not take the longer ones, it takes the short size ones. Sorry if you can hear my neighbor outside. Um, but this is just like the other, the, the Pilot. You just pop this cartridge in and give it a few seconds and your ink will start to flow to your nib and you're ready to write. You can also purchase separately a Kaveco converter. Now these are kind of a joke to some people because they are so small. I mean, this is a small cartridge. You can see compared to the Pilot even just how small it is, but but look at that ink capacity. I mean, it is just tiny. However, I still like the converter because it's easy to use and I only like to fill my pens a small amount so that I can kind of use up the ink in there and then ink up a different pen. So I don't like to fill my pens all the way anyway. So a small converter does not bother me. Um, I'm gonna put that back in there. The nibs on these are German nibs. Um, they are made by Schmidt, 
and they use that wider, they're wider lines typically like the Twisbees. Um, so usually, you know, just one size up the fines, the fines are more like a, um, a, a Japanese uh, medium and the mediums are more like a Japanese broad. So that's just um, kind of the standard rule. Um, but they're great pens. They're easy to throw in your pocket. You know, they're just so small and lightweight. Um, they cost about $27 is what I looked up. Sometimes they'll be a little more, sometimes they'll be a little less. Um, you know, they're a little more sometimes if they're like a store exclusive or something special. Um, sometimes you can get a deal on them or get a coupon for them. So, but $27 is about right. And then um, if you wanted that converter that's in there, it's about $6. Um, and the clip, this style of clip is only $3 to add on. So that is not a big, a big thing. There's a different clip that's called the deluxe clip that I actually don't like any more than this one. It's fine. That's six dollars, and I only have one of those on one pin, I think, <laughs> maybe two. So um, I like the plain three dollar clip myself. All right, my next choice is the Platinum Meteor. So Platinum makes a pretty wide range of inexpensive pens, but I in particular like this Meteor. Um, mine in, mine is a Hello Kitty series or a Sanrio series. This one has my melody on it, but they come in a lot of cute colors. You know, you can find these same ones or you can find them in like solid colors, pastels, really cute pens. They're kind of a, um, uh, they're an octagon shape um, and very lightweight. These pens are very, very lightweight um, plastic pens. Um, they have a, let me see, they, they have a, a sort of a cousin that is called the Platinum Plazier, um, which is a metal pen, and that is the only reason that I prefer this one, is that I prefer a plastic pen over a metal pen. But they have the same grip section, they have the same nib. Um, the Platinum is, again, a cartridge converter filling system, so um, it, will, it will come most likely with a platinum cartridge, um, which you can just pop in there and have ink to write with. My pen also came with a little um, inexpensive slide converter, which you just slide the piston up and down, but I cannot find it anywhere. So um, I did thankfully just have some regular platinum converters and um, works the same as the other. You just push it in there, draw up your ink, and this um, heavier converter, too, actually gives a little weight to the pen, which is kind of nice. Um, so Platinum has quite a few options. The Platinum Preppy is very popular, but it's one that I don't love because it's, it's only about $6, which is great. But it has all kinds of branding on it and looks like a store pen that's almost disposable, even though it is refillable. But this pen has the same nib. Um, it is a Japanese brand. So they are the finer nibs, um, very smooth steel nibs, um, and they're interchangeable between things like the Plazier and the the Prefount. Is that what it's called? Procyon. Anyway, there's several of these platinum pens that use these same nibs, and you can actually just unscrew this whole thing out too and replace it over there. So I could put the pink pink feed in a one of my meteors if I wanted to. I'm not a huge fan of metal pens, which is why this is not my first recommendation. But if you do like metal pens, then the Plazier is a great way to go. So, Platinum uh, Meteor. It's also called the Shooting Star. And they do cost, they cost around $12, 10 to $12. Um, you can find them for as low as 6 or $7 in different places. Um, the nicer converter like I have in here. Those are kind of expensive for platinum pens. I think they're between 10 and $11 um, or around 10 or $11. Um, but those, hopefully if you buy one, it'll come with one of those little slide converters. But even still, if you have to buy a $12 pen and a $10 converter, I think it's completely worth it. Super cute, great writer, snap cap, um, 
all of that. So, and then my fifth choice is the Lamy Safari. Now, lots of people choose this as their um, recommendation for beginners. Um, it is a classic pen. It's a student pen in Germany. It is a German brand, Lamy is. Um, it's a snap cap, like several of the others. Um, has this gorgeous clip. I love the Lamy clips. Um, really sturdy and they clip onto your bag or your shirt really well. Um, it has this tripod grip. That is my only con for the Lamy Safari is that I don't hold my pen exactly the way that you're supposed to. Supposed to. Um, I kind of put my finger here on top and it does not, um, it is not super comfortable for me all the time. So these kind of edges are a little sharp. Um, they're not sharp, sharp, but you know, they're uncomfortable for a long writing session. So that is my one con. Um, again, this is a cartridge converter system. Um, cartridges just pop in just like this. Your pen should come with a cartridge. You can buy a converter separately and um, it pops in there. It has these little uh, knobs on the sides. So they slide, they pop in, which is a really good feature to hold your converter in. Um, because truthfully, a lot of pens, if this is dropped hard enough um, onto the floor or, you know, jostled just enough, some pins, the converter, I think this one is in tight enough, but some pins, the converter can sort of come out of the pen and that, um, then you have ink floating around in the, in the barrel of your pen. But the Slami one kind of notches in, so it's almost difficult to pop out. Um, so yeah. That is a Lamy Safari. The um, the nibs are, again, they're German, so they're the broader sizes. Um, a Safari will cost you about $30. They have um, special editions every year in different colors and different, um, you know, different finishes. Sometimes they're matte finishes. Um, so a lot of options for Lamy Safaris. They've been around forever. And, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. The only, no, a pro of the Lamy Safari is that the nibs are interchangeable. So these nibs are, um, I can't see my phone screen right now because my low battery thing popped up. So hopefully you can see this. Um, the nibs are interchangeable. So whereas most of these nibs will unscrew out of the pen and you can remove them, this one it just slides right off. So I'm gonna use this little rubber grip. Hopefully I can do it this way so you can, now you can't see that. I can grip this nib and just pull it off, just like that. I have in fact done this while there's ink in the pen and put a different nib on there. So you can buy a new Lamy Safari nib for I think around $10. They used to be about $7 and I think they've probably gone up. Um, and have a completely different nib on your pen, a different size and just change that out and use just one pen. So if you're a one pen kind of person and you want to have different nibs, different nib sizes, then a Lamy Safari is a great way to go. Um, I will say that Lamy, Platinum, Pilot all use proprietary systems, filling systems. Platinum can, cartridges and converters can only go in platinum pens. <laughs> um, same for Pilot, same for Lamy. Um, Caveco uses the Standard International, which means, I know I said that term, but Standard International is a standard size. So this tip area is what makes it Standard International sizing. So this would fit into a lot of my pens. A lot of my, um, like the Benu pens will take standard. Um, the Laban pens will take standard cartridges. Esterbrooks, um, Edison, this is an Edison Nouveau Premier. They, you know, lots of pens take standard international. And then a lot of the bespoke pens um, you know, like made by smaller makers, take standard sizes. Franklin Kristoff. Franklin Kristoff pens use standard international cartridges and converters. So there is a benefit to it, but once you have a couple, you know, 
once you have a, a, a converter for each brand, then you're, you're good to go. Um, and yeah, so this is my top five. Um, like I said, I would have been the kind of person that would have said, don't give me the $2 pin. Like, what can I go ahead and get? That's kind of nice. <laughs> um, I'll give you a couple of other little bonus pins. The Caveco Perkio is a, a more like an $18, I want to say, $15 to $18 Caveco pin. It has the same type of nib on it. it has a little bit of a tripod grip. It is a student, kind of considered a student pin. Um, and But it takes a full-size standard international converter or cartridge. So there's you can see the difference between what the, the small and the full-size are. So this is another good option. Um, it has a snap cap and it's less expensive. Another option for the Kakuno. This is a Pilot Metropolitan. You've probably seen these. Um, they're wonderful. Nothing wrong with them. They're metal, so they're a little bit cold to me. That's, that's you know, I just don't love metal pens. But if you want something that looks a little more professional, um, the Pilot Metropolitan is a great way to go. Um, same exact nibs, same filling system as the Kakuno. Um, so yeah, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, I feel like this one was a little more put together than the last few times I've done it, which is probably saying something. So um, I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I respond to every comment um, and enjoy conversing with you guys. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions. There are no dumb questions, really. <laughs> when it comes to pens, I'm glad to answer anything for you. Um, and other people will jump in and help as well. So um, I hope you enjoy getting into fountain pens and discovering what you like and not breaking, not breaking the bank in the meantime. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe um, or please consider subscribing. I am enjoying growing this channel and um, hopefully seeing what comes down the road. I'm thinking when I hit my 1,000 subscribers, um, which could be, you know, in a couple of years or never, <laughs> but I want to do a giveaway. So um, I'm looking forward to that and already thinking about what do I want to give away. Um, if you have any thoughts on that, then uh, leave them in the comment section below too. I will link some of these pens or at least put the names. I don't love to link always because I don't necessarily want to support one specific fountain pen store. I like for you to go search and, and decide who you want to shop from, but maybe I'll leave a few suggestions. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.